Okay. <clears throat> Round two. Although most of you won't know because I won't be posting round one. All right, so we are working on similar figures today. So the original problem looks like this. And what we need to look at, is there are two triangles. There's the small one right there. And then there is a larger one right here. So what I have my students do first is break up the two triangles so that you can envision two of these triangles uh, side by side. Because so we look at them side by side, maybe it's easier to see the small figure versus the large one instead of trying to pull it off. Like here's the large triangle, here's the small triangle. What matches up with what? Um, so in doing so, we can, oops, by doing so, we can separate them and look at them a little bit clearer. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a similarity statement. And what we're going to do is we're going to show one side is similar to another side. Obviously, they're not equal because these triangles, one's bigger than the other. But there's a correlation between this triangle and this triangle. All right. So we have side AB is going to be similar. you guessed it to side AD and with similar figures there's a ratio that's equal so the ratio between the bottom and the bottom is actually the same as the side and the side or the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse since we both have two right triangles um, so now we are going to correlate not just the bottom but now we're going to take this side and this side now when we did the first one we said that a b went on the top and we'll start to talk about what this is so the small figure if we put it on top needs to stay consistent so we put this bottom um side of the triangle or the bottom leg however you want to call it and we put it on top so when we talk about c b that has to be on the top of our other proportion because we have to keep consistent with the small figure and the small figure, which means the big figure being AD when on the bottom, that means ED has to go on the bottom as well because that's coming off the bigger figure of the two, okay? And if we write our similarity statement ABC, it's going to be similar to triangle A. D, E, because we go A to the right angle up to the other side, A to the right angle up to the other side. So you can see how these letters coordinate. Now, most times if I talked about B, C or C, B, there's a correct way and then there's an incorrect way, but still gives you the same information. Because if I go from A to B, isn't that distance the same from B to A? So sometimes they do get swapped back and forth and depending on how much of a stickler your teacher is, they can dock you for it. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're focused enough to be like, well, if it starts with A on the top, then it should start with A on the bottom because the first letter in both of these is an A. And then A to B, the second letter, A to D, the second letter. <clears throat> so, um, Try and stay as consistent as you can. But if you get it close, like this is our similarity statement. So this is what I would start writing. Okay. And then we can move on from there. Now, um, if you wanted to write a really, really formal, formal proof, I could tell you AB equals X, CB equals 1, AD equals X plus 9, DE equals 5. Um, for my students, I just have them do straight to substitution. If the picture tells you it's given information, so at some point you got to get somewhat decent at this and just start writing what you see. Now, if you want, if you're in college and are writing formal proofs, you definitely want to include A, B equals this, C, B equals this, A, D equals this, D, E equals that, and say that is given because the picture tells you. Um, and 
we could even get a little bit trickier and say that a to d we have to use the segment addition postulate a piece a b plus a piece b d equals the whole thing a d and that's technically where x plus 9 comes from because if i start here and i get to b that's just x and then if i go b to d that's just 9 but if I want the whole length of this little bottom base of my big triangle, I have to do x plus 9 to get the whole thing, which is where the x plus 9 comes from. So let's just substitute our values in. So AB is x, AD is x plus 9. And we're going to set it equal. I'll change that color real quick. Change that. And then we're going to put CB on top. So CB is a 1 and ED is a 5. So all we did was substituted our values in for what our segments were. So our segment ED, the length of it is 5. So we substituted that 5 in. Now, the next step is we have to cross multiply. Oops. Um, so when we cross multiply, what we are doing is we draw a circle around this and we're going to draw a circle around this. And what gets drawn in the circle is what you're going to multiply. So for the first one, I'm going to do a 1 times x plus 9. And that's this diagonal. And then we're going to multiply the other diagonal. When we do that, we're setting these equal to each other. So now I'm going to do 5 times x. Now, and we're going to call this cross multiply, okay? So we cross multiply. Now, 1 times x, 1 times 9, if we distribute this inside the parentheses. So we're going to do 1 times x, and we're going to do 1 times 9. Well, as you would guess, it just becomes x plus 9. Because 1 times anything is just itself. And then on the other side, 5 times x is just 5x. And I told them to write just simplify. And all we're doing is simplifying our expression. You could say distributive property if you really want. Um, it depends on how, once again, how technical your teacher wants to be. Um, I just want them to have an idea of what they're doing. So I try not to over stress like the justification i just want them to understand why they're doing something okay so then once i do that i'm going to underline the variables because eventually i want to get x by itself i want x to equal something so what i need to do is i'm going to underline the variables and draw a line down the middle of the equal sign what we notice is that there are underlines on opposite sides of my line so that means i need to take all these x's and put them on this side or I can take all of these X's and put them on that side. The suggestion on what should I do, well, comes down to a very simple question. How many, and I'm gonna put a one here, which number's larger, the one X over on this side or the five X's over on that side? Because whatever the larger one is, that's what I want to move the others to so that I don't have to deal with negatives. The quickest way to make a mistake is to forget a negative. And so if we can eliminate even having negatives at all, that would be very helpful to you. So because this is a 1, I'm going to move this over here to the 5x. So to get rid of a positive 1x, I'm going to subtract 1x from both sides. And the reason we're going to do this is because we want to zero out the one X's. So we want these one X's and a lot of times you will hear your teacher say, well, we got to cancel them out. You are canceling them out. But if you want to be more specific and impress your teacher, tell them we are zeroing out the one X's because what's one X minus one X? Isn't that zero? And then we are left with a 9 still over here. Because these cancel, we still have a 9, we just drop it down. <clears throat> now, once we do that, we have to look at the other side. If I have 5x's and I take a 1x away from those 5, so think about like having 5 pennies in your hand. And if I take a penny out, how many do I have? Well, I have 4, 
but we're describing what they are. They're X's or they're pennies. So we have to make sure and keep that penny or that X idea still in there. So just because I have four, but four what? I have four pennies. So the four X's are still there. And we're gonna call this subtraction property of equality. And we'll shorten it up as we go along, but for the first time you've seen this, I wanna make sure you understand it's a subtraction property of equality. And why it's a property of equality is because what we do to one side, we have to balance it out and do it to the other side. And when we do something to both sides, then the word that's coming into your head is equally. So that's why it's called an equality because we want to do it to both sides equally, okay? So once we do that, the one X's cancel out and you can be more specific and press your teacher and say, well, we're zeroing out the one X's and we're left with a nine. And then five X take away one X gives us four X. So we are on to our last step in this situation where in between the four and the X, um, there is a mathematical operation. Think about what we started off right at the beginning. We did five times X and that just gave us a five X but there's multiplication in there. There's that dot in between those. So how do we get rid of multiplication? And hopefully the buzzword that's coming along, chat, is division. Yeah, we're gonna put a little division. And you could, um, I would stress you not to, but I'll show it. Once I fix what I erased, here's four X. The unpopular opinion is, oh, I wanna divide both sides by four. Yeah, you can write divide by four, but it's not as pretty. And the reason it's not as pretty is because sometimes, like this problem specifically, nine does not go into four evenly. Like that's not a correct answer. Um, so what we're going to do, or what we're, what we're gonna say here is we want to one, out the fours because what's four divided by itself well it just becomes a one and a one x um is what happens on the right hand side so these fours cancel and i hate to use the word cancel i actually tell my students i don't want you to have cancel in your vocabulary anymore i want you to be more specific either we are zeroing out when we add or subtract or we're gonna one out when we multiply or divide. So one out the fours. And how did we do that? By using the division prop of equal, property of equality. Now, once again, if your teacher's a stickler, write it all out, but division prop of equal will work for me. Um, and you'll be left with nine fourths. And there's a lot of different ways you can look at nine fourths. Now, do I need to divide both sides by one again? No, because one's not gonna change our answer. Uh, if we divided both sides by one, we would still end with nine over four. Um, you're, you're not changing the problem at all. Now there's a couple different ways you could look at this. You could see nine over four. Well, four goes into nine two times with four times two being eight, nine minus eight, there's a remainder of one, and we could have two and one fourth, or we could have 2.25 if you knew that a quarter equals 0.25. So all of these solutions are good solutions. Whatever your teacher likes best is what you need to put, but for me, I would take any of them. And how did we get this answer? By using the division property of equality. So it's not, we're not changing anything from this step to this step. This is our final answer. But there are three different ways, excuse me, you could look at it. <clears throat> well, there's infinitely many different ways, but these are gonna be the three most popular ways to look at it. All right, so first thing we wanna do, write a similarity statement, substitute our values in, cross multiply, and then once we're done cross multiplying, we really wanna solve it for the variable. That's gonna be our routine time and time again.
So why don't we, let me do this. Let's write out our steps. Let's call them. So step one, let's write a similarity statement. Well, what's a similarity statement? A similarity statement is fraction equals a fraction. And I just put numbers here, could be letters, segments, whatever you wanna call it. I want my students to get in the habit of seeing this because we're actually gonna to go to geometric mean next week and x over a number equals a number over x will be easily identifiable for them because they've been working with this type of similarity statement. All right, step two. We're going to, we're going to use substitution. Substitute your values into your segments, okay? So write a similarity statement, then we're gonna substitute our values into our segments. Step three, we are going to cross multiply. So cross multiply. And then step four, we want to finish out and solve for our variable. And a variable just means whatever your letter is that represents the unknown. We could put a dollar sign for an unknown, but a lot of math and that type of situation, they start to throw letters in there. Don't get scared. It's just an unknown. They don't know what to do with it, so they use a letter. Okay, so solve for our variable. All right, so next on our docket, this is the one you want to try. So if you were watching this on YouTube, pause, test it out, and see what you can do with it. For us, we are going to start with step one. Step one, write a similarity statement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a short bottom here. So that goes from A to B. So we're gonna start with A, B. And that's going to compare to the other longer bottom that goes from A to D. Then we're gonna come up the sides and we can go B to C. And remember, we started with the orange, right? So let's document this. Orange is AB and that's the small triangle. So the small triangle again has gotta be CB, okay? And then the red, was A to D, A, D. So then the red is going to go, uh, if we went C to B, let's go E to D. So we stay consistent with our letters. So if I started up here and work my way down, I wanna start up here again and work my way down. And we're just gonna call that our similarity statement. So with our similarity statement, now we wanna plug in some values. So if we look at from A to B, that one we're going to see is X. I'm gonna skip over to the other side because I think CB you should be able to see is two clearly, and ED is three. So all of that is set up properly. The only difficult one is when we have to look from A to D. And what happens is, is we have to, uh, we have to include everything. So when I start here, I'm going A to B, which is X, and then B to D, which is two. So I wanna add those together to make sure I get the full length of A to D. Now, common mistake that happens every single time is people just use two. And two is not 
a triangle by any stretch of the means. If I look at B, C, E, D, that's a trapezoid, not a triangle. So I wanna make sure I still have that triangle aspect. And when I go A to D, I've got this huge long space, not just a two, okay? So we call this substitution. So substituting our numbers in, okay? Um, I just want to adjust something. I'm going to adjust where my alerts come. I'm almost going to put them over my face. It's because I don't want it to hide my work. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we use substitution. We substituted our values in. And now once we get here, this is the time to cross multiply. Okay. So we're going to cross multiply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I'm going to show you that it works whether I start with the down diagonal or the up diagonal, however you want to call these. So we're going to do three times X, and then we're going to do two times X plus two. So this is our cross multiply. So we're, we're just cross, we're multiplying diagonally, and then we set them equal to each other. Now, when we get a three times X, that's just three X. We have to distribute our two inside the parentheses. So we're going to do a two times X and get two X. And we're gonna do a two times two and get a four. And if I have a positive number times a positive number, we should get a positive number. The only time you really have to think about those is when there's a negative involved, because a negative times a negative equals a positive, a negative times a positive equals a negative, a positive times a negative equals a negative, and then a positive times a positive equals a positive. Uh, and so count, I mean, it, the, the, what I tell my students is count them. If there's an even number, then it stays positive. If there's an odd number, it stays negative. So even if you add multiple numbers, you're multiplying together, just count the number of negatives. If we only have, if we have three negatives, the answer still comes out to be negative. If we have four negatives, then that answer becomes positive. So quick history lesson. I call them history lessons when I have to talk about stuff that prior knowledge, we call them history lessons. Okay, so I've got variables on both sides of the equal sign. We talked about this last time too. Remember we had an X over here and an X over here. So we have them on opposite sides of our line. So when it happens again, we have an X on this side and we have an X on this side. And here's our equal sign. That means we have to shift one of them to one side or the other. What I tell you to do, look at the number in front of the X. Whatever the larger one is between the two, I would move them to that side. So three is larger than two, so that means I'm gonna move this guy over on this side. This person, this thing, over on that side. Um, so what is the opposite of a positive two X? Well, that's going to be a minus two X. So we're gonna subtract 2x from both sides. So that means the 2x minus the 2x, we are, ooh, oh man. I'm forgetting some of, my, some of my justifications. Okay, so this one we're gonna call simplify. So we just did the distributive property and got 2x plus four. So why are we subtracting 2x from both sides? Because we want to zero out the two X's, we gotta get rid of the two X. We want them to uh, cancel, I hate saying the word cancel, but we want them, We want to zero them out. We want to move all those X's to the other side so we can get this number four all by itself. All by myself. Yeah, you wanna get it all alone because once we get it all alone, then we can get this X all alone and we've got our solution. So that is what our goal is. So we do three X's, take away two X's, doesn't that only leave us with uno de nero, one dollar. Um, one X, we're left with one. Um, so X equals four, and how did we get that? We did 
the subtraction. So I'm going to subtract prop of equal. Subtraction property of equality. I'm going to shorten it up. So subtraction property of equality. That's what we were doing to get that to cancel out. All right. So, man, that's not a good place for it. Okay, well, let's just put it in the bottom corner. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out how to do this without hiding stuff. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so subtraction property of equality. Uh, any questions, chat? Didn't think so. All right. Let's move on. Last one. So this one, you want to break up these two triangles. Start to look at them as individuals instead of one big, huge triangle. Start to see the top triangle. Um, and we're going to put top right here and we'll put bottom right here so that you can see the top versus the bottom triangle we're just separating we're pulling them apart we're breaking off a piece of that kit kat bar you know so split them up that way you can identify the sides that you really need to look at and focus on um and I use small figure, big figure, small figure, big figure. What about top versus bottom? You don't have to know which one's the bigger one, which one's, they almost look identical. So let's just use the top versus the bottom. That way we don't have to fight with what is small, what is not. And on a fraction, if we use the top triangle, it should go on the top of our fraction. And if we use the bottom triangle, it should go on the bottom of our, use, logic which my co-teacher had to like logic me in on it <laughs> she was like you, you should just keep the top on the top and the bottom on the bottom I'm like yes yes I should so shout out to uh miss Pete I don't want to call her out because I didn't get her approval first Sim I don't even know what I'm doing now <laughs> uh similarity statement that's what we got to put similarity statement and if nothing else i'm entertaining myself and maybe the one or two other people that are ever gonna really watch us <laughs> all right so similarity statement here we go let's start we're gonna start on the top and we're gonna start with ac so we're gonna do ac on top and that is going to correlate in our other figure over here to a b to a b so that's going to go on the bottom okay so we have the top and then the bottom um yeah i don't want to i don't want to i really am trying not to i don't want to confuse people so let's just talk about cd being on top and BD being on the bottom. So when we look at this, what we are justifying it with is this angle. And there's a lot of different ways you can start to prove similarity. Um, we're just going to not, I, I don't want to go deep into that because it could get very confusing very quickly. And that's almost like a whole nother lesson. But if you know all three angles, well, you only need to know two of the angles are equal and you can start to prove that they're similar. So as much as I don't wanna break that down, just trust that this is how our similarity statement's going to work. So we're gonna work out from A to B and then A to C, and then we'll go C, D, B, D, okay? Now we're gonna substitute our values in. So CD we can see is going to be a three. BD is going to be a 2.8. Please don't be afraid with decimals, fractions, those types of things you need. We wanna get comfortable with them. AC is a question mark. We can put a question mark. Unless, if you don't like X's and variables or A's or whatever, use a question mark. I don't care. And your teacher shouldn't really either. Um, unless they're directly telling you to use variables. So once again, step two, substitution. Step three, cross multiplication, cross multiply. 
So we are going to do 2.8 times. I make that big so that it differs from sometimes your decimals kind of creep up and I don't want it to be confusing. So that's why I make a huge dot all the time. And we're going to do question mark times 2.8. And then we're going to do 3 times 5.5. Okay. Um, and we'll call this cross multiply. When we do this, Desmos, we're going to do three times 5.5 and get 16.5. Now, quick history lesson, 5.5 times three. 3 times 5 is 15, carry the 1, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 is 16, and then how many numbers are behind the decimal? Just 1. So that is how they get 16.5. Uh, if you don't like this method, what I do a lot of times, because what happens is, is we start multiplying polynomials, is we can do 5 times 5, I guess I don't need the bottom. I just need a 1 by 2. So 3 times 5 is 15. Ugh, no, that's going to get dirty. I don't like that method. Um, just trust chat. You know, when we when we learned it back in our day, which was a while ago, I know there's many different methods now. Sometimes they'll do five times three, then they'll do a three times a point five, then they'll add these to get like I don't I don't have the perfect to be on end all solutions. What it is is getting a number sense, getting practice. So this is one point five. This is going to be 15, 15 plus 1.5 gives us that 16.5. Um, whatever method you like, <laughs> I just move that to get it. Oh, I don't know. I got nothing on this one. Um, but there's different methods. What you have to do is get comfortable with the number sense. You have to, it's almost like playing um, blackjack. And once you start seeing an ace and a six, you know, you're looking at seven or 17. You know, when you start to look at these cards, you start to think about what numbers you want and really getting a good number sense. It just starts to, I don't know, become second nature, but it does take practice. It's not something you're going to come to overnight. <clears throat> All right. So we have 2.8 times question mark. So we want to get rid of, and if we're trying to solve for the question mark, there's our variable, there's our line. We want to get rid of the 2.8. Well, in between 2.8 was, and the question mark was multiplication. Um, I'll just put simplify here, because all we did was simplify our solution. So we need to divide by 2.8. And the reason we need to divide by 2.8 is because we want to one out the 2.8s. So we want these to become a one because once it becomes a one, then all we're left with is our variable that we're trying to solve for. So once we do that using division prop of equality, division property of equality, um, we'll get our solution. So we're going to take our answer from before, 16.5, and divide it by 2.8. And we're going to get 5.892, blah, blah. Nope, we're going to round it to one decimal place. So 5.89. So 5.89. You're going to go, Schmidt, you didn't round it. You're right, I didn't, because if we want to round it to one decimal place, we need that second decimal place to tell us what this is going to round it to. And what you will see is 0, 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If you count your digits, when you count your digits, oops, when you count your digits, how many of them, four, three, two, one, zero, are above this, and how many, one, two, three, four, five, are below it. So that's why five is our key. If it's five or above, we round up. If it's four or below, we keep it the same. So it is very dependent on that second value of this right here where it falls in. And we can see our nine is right here, huge. So it's gonna round it up. And this is going to be 5.9 once we round. So that second number is very important to us because that's what it's gonna tell us to round that first digit. We're either gonna keep it an eight or round it up to a nine. We will never round down to a seven. It will either be an eight or a nine and those are the only two options we have. So it will either stay itself or go up one, but that's when we round, that's the only way it's gonna happen. All right. So we've done a couple examples. I hope this gets you a good jump to what we need to do for uh, at least 9.2. I feel like 9.3 went very smooth, but we can create some more problems and maybe create another video for that. But I really think 9.2 is where our deep focus needs to be before Friday for our test. Um, we can do some simpler stuff, which will start tomorrow and then work into this on Thursday. And we'll call it a day. All right. Well, for everyone out there in the world, thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a blessed week. And we'll catch you next Monday.